Well, welcome back to Redeemed by Grace Fellowship, kids. We have sure missed you. I hope you've had a good week, and I hope you're ready for an awesome lesson today and to have a little bit of fun with it, too. We've got to think a little bit about this lesson, and we've got to even look at ourselves and say, do I do that? Because I really don't want to do that. Hopefully, I do better than that. But we're going to take a look at it because we're going to look at an awesome story about Jacob and Rachel. And we're going to learn a lot about keeping promises. Keeping promises. But before we get started, I need to remind you to make sure that you ask mom and dad if it's okay for you to subscribe to this channel, whether you're watching it on YouTube or Rumble. That way you never, never miss one of our lessons and a chance to learn about Jesus and a chance to share Jesus with our friends and a chance to have some fun together. Isn't that awesome? But make sure you ask mom and dad first, because we never want to do anything on the internet without asking them first. So make sure you do that. And then we want to make sure that we share it with our friends. There's a button down there that says share. We can send this video out to our friends, or we could invite our friends over and, and watch the video together. So make sure that you do that as well. But before we get into it and we start talking about uh, this keeping the promises and all this it is, we have a video to watch like we do every week. So let's go ahead and cue that thing up here. And here we go. <laughs> In our Bible lesson today, Jacob was on the run from his brother who was very, very angry with him. Jacob traveled far to escape his brother's anger. One night, Jacob was resting after a long day on the run. God spoke to him in a dream. He said, Wherever you go, I will watch over you. I won't leave you. I will do all I have promised. You can imagine, Jacob woke up feeling pretty good. He stopped to chit-chat with some local shepherds by a well. As it turned out, they knew Jacob's very own uncle, Laban. Wow, Jacob thought. That's amazing. He found relatives on his journey who could possibly help him. Then, the shepherds told him something even more amazing. They said, Look, here comes Laban's daughter, Rachel, right now. Jacob was stunned. Rachel was beautiful. He was in love. Jacob wanted to meet his uncle, Rachel's father, right away. He hoped he had a chance with Rachel. Laban was happy to see his nephew and offered him work and a place to stay. Life was looking up for Jacob. Laban even wanted to pay Jacob for his work. He said, You shouldn't work for me without pay just because we're relatives. Tell me how much your wages should be. Jacob thought about this and then he had what he thought was a brilliant idea. I'll work for you. For seven years in exchange, you promised to let me marry Rachel. Laban looked at his two daughters, Rachel and Leah. Leah was older and should have been the one to marry first, but Jacob didn't love her. He loved Rachel. Okay, Laban said after a bit. I promise Rachel will be your wife. So Jacob worked hard for seven years. After years of hard work, it was finally time for Jacob to marry Rachel. Laban threw a big party to celebrate, but that night he broke his promise and switched Leah, his older daughter, for Rachel. Jacob realized too late that he'd been tricked. Boy, was he mad. Jacob had worked for seven years and kept his promise, only to have Laban break his promise. Why have you deceived me? He cried. Everything was a mess because Laban didn't keep his promise. But there is some good news. God always keeps his promises. Remember, God promised Jacob he wouldn't leave him. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29:11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. God had made a promise to Jacob and he stood by it. So Jacob asked Laban to be true to his promise. Laban finally said, Okay, Rachel will be your wife in a week if you work for me for another seven years. Jacob loved Rachel so much that he agreed and this time Laban kept his promise. Jacob got to marry the real Rachel this time. 
Jacob's story shows us that God always keeps his promises, and he wants us to keep ours too. How will you keep your promises this week? Well, again, we're going to talk about keeping promises. And I bet if I ask you this question, every one of you will raise your hand. So get ready to raise your hand if this has ever happened to you. Has anyone ever broken a promise to you? Yeah, I bet we all have had somebody break a promise to us, whether they did it by accident or they meant to. Either way, they broke a promise to us, didn't they? But here's the hard question, friends. Has, have you ever broken a promise to someone else? I guess I have. And I bet you have too. And that made them just as sad or angry probably as it did when they broke a promise to you, right? And so we have to think about that sometimes. I mean, perhaps uh, you promised mom you, that you would clean your room, but you forgot about it. And you went outside to play and have a good time and forgot all about your promise that you made to mom to clean your room. And again, maybe you've even made a promise uh, to someone, even though you didn't even plan to keep it. You just said, okay, I'll do it just to get them to go away and be quiet. But that's not good either, is it? So we give our word, we give our promise, we should keep our word. And we should keep our promise. And why? Because God always keeps his promises to us. And that's so important for us to remember. So important for us to remember. At all time. At all times we should remember that. In fact, uh, as today's Bible lesson, uh, we we uh, saw a little bit about the story there in the video, but it, it, the lesson again today is about Jacob and how Jacob and Rachel met and fell in love. And you see the picture there. We see Rachel on the left. We see Jacob in the middle. And we see Rachel's sister, older sister, Leah, there on the right. But Jacob and Rachel met and fell in love. But this is more than that story. It's not all about them two falling in love. It's about making promises and keeping them. You see... Rachel and Leah's father, uh, his name, he was a man named Laban, and he had two daughters, of course, that we see there. Leah was the oldest, so she technically should be getting married first. And Rachel was the youngest, but Rachel uh, wasn't, was the one that Jacob loved. Jacob loved her very much. And even though Leah was the older sister, Jacob didn't really love her. He loved Rachel. So Laban gave Jacob a job and a place to stay. And then J uh, Laban said, you shouldn't work for me without any pay just because we're relatives. Tell me how much your wages should be. How much should I pay you? And Jacob thought about this. And he was crazy, crazy about Rachel. So he said, I'll work for you for seven years if you let me have your younger daughter, Rachel, as my wife. Well, that is interesting, right? And guess what? Laban agreed. He made that promise. So Jacob worked for seven years for Rachel. Seven years. That's a long, long time, isn't it? I mean, how old will you be in seven years? And that seems like forever, doesn't it? 
But even though it was a long, long time to Jacob, it only seemed like a few days because he loved Rachel so much and was so excited to marry her. And finally, after seven years, he went to Laban and said, I've worked for you for seven years. Now, keep your promise and give me, your, uh, give me Rachel as my wife. So Laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a big feast to celebrate this wedding. And when night came, Laban went into the darkness and gave his daughter Leah to Jacob instead of Rachel. It took Jacob a little while, but he finally realized that Laban had switched his bride. He had switched it out. It, and, and, and he got mad. I, I think you and I would probably get mad too if somebody fooled us like that. And, and he said, what have you done to me? Didn't I work seven years for Rachel? Why have you tricked me? Why have you swapped them and given me Leah instead of Rachel? But you know, Laban didn't even apologize or he offered to make it right. And you and I need to do that when we mess up. And we make a promise and we can't break it. We need to apologize for doing that. And we need to do what we can to make it right and fix it. So that we can make sure that other person that we broke a promise to can be happy. But you can imagine that Jake, he was upset. He wanted Laban to keep his promise. And finally Laban said, all right. If you'll work for me seven more years. That's a long time, right? Seven more years? That's 14 years total. How are you going to be in 14 years? It's a long, long time, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. But if you work for me for seven more years, then you may have Rachel for your wife. Seven more years. But Jacob really, really loved Rachel. So he agreed. And finally, after seven more years had passed, Laban actually kept his promise and gave Jacob his daughter, Rachel, the one he loved, as his wife. As his wife. That is important because he's no longer mad. But you know, Laban wasn't very good at keeping his promises. Well, boys and girls, God is. When God makes a promise, you know he'll keep it. And that's important. Because God never lies. He always tells the truth. And he always keeps his promise. Every promise he's ever made, he has kept. Including to send Jesus, the Messiah, to save us from our sins. God wants us to be faithful to keep our promises too. And we need to remember that when we do make a promise, that we have to remember, I promised this to my friend, and I need to keep it. I promised to clean my room to my mom. And even though everybody wants to go outside and play and have fun, I need to tell my friends, I'll be right out in a bit. But first, I have to keep my promise to my mom to clean my room. Maybe they'll even come in and help you. That would be fun, wouldn't it? If they came in and helped you, you could get outside and play faster. But keeping that promise is more important than us getting to go out and have fun right at that moment. 
So let's make sure that we keep our promises as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's pray together. That was a fantastic lesson. It's a tough one for us sometimes, but it is an important one, isn't it? It sure is. It sure is. Let's pray together. Pray with me. God, thank you for keeping your promise to us. Thank you for being here to help us. Please help us faithfully keep the promises we make to others. And we pray this in Jesus' name, who kept his promise to us. Amen and amen. Well, wow, that was a fantastic lesson. Make sure that, again, you ask mom and dad if it's okay if you subscribe to this channel, whether you're on YouTube or Rumble, so that you never miss out on any of these. Because guess what? We will be back next week with a new lesson. Next week, we will be back and we're going to be looking about uh, again another story about Jacob. But Jacob wrestles with God. What? Yeah, I don't know if you like wrestling or not, or you watch wrestling on TV, or or you uh, like to go to uh, uh, watch your older brother and sister wrestle at the school, but wrestling with God? Whoa, do we ever do that? What does he mean? What happens? What it happened with that? Well, come back next week. We will find out together what happens when Jacob wrestles with God. So make sure that you're here. Well, right now it's time for us to get ready to go. So make stand up on your feet, get ready to march around the room, and let's march around the room and singing about the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible, God's very word. That's where we find out his promises and we see the truth that he has kept every single one. So ready? On your feet. One, two, three. Let's go.